welcome you to worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before the needs of our neighbors. We keep your gifts of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again into life through you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of us all who we'll call it in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in this world. Amen.
Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act in your glory. Redeemed in you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of the malice, said, Why are you putting, to me, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin you used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Hi, my name is Maggie Green, and I'm doing a sermon on hope. Um, I used the verse Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans to prosper your, you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. When these words were spoken, Israel was in exile for their disobedience. A false prophet had told Israel that God would deliver them from Babylon in two years' time, and Jeremiah had come to set the record straight. However, he delivered the heartbreaking news that Israel will spend the next 70 years in Babylon. This is not the news that they wanted to hear. This would mean that an entire generation wouldn't survive in exile. But God wants them to know that he still has a plan for them for the wayward nation. As time drags on, they're going to need to hold on to the belief that God isn't finished with them. This hope will help, maintain, help them maintain their stamina in the decade to come. The reason I chose this story above others is because I found that this best describes the families that Blaze, our youth group, has the opportunity to help on our mission trips. And I really had no idea what I was getting into. And I don't think there's enough words in the world to fully describe the type of environment our mission trip brings to its youth along with the chaperones. These experiences are heartbreaking and uplifting. And while this summer I did not share this opportunity due to obvious reasons, I'm excited to share with you some of my past experiences, which wouldn't be possible without the help and donation and donations from this congregation. On my, on my first mission trip to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I was an incoming freshman with a bionic arm due to previous sports injuries, which with long work days and extreme humidity, this surprisingly was not a real fun aspect of the trip. Except when I realized my suffering was nothing compared to these families in Baton Rouge, at the time I was quick to, uh, I was quick to vacate these complaints. We were, we were helping with hurricane recovery and I was placed at work at the work site of the kindest family who had basically lost everything. This family of five was living in a trailer in front of their home with literally, that literally had to be rebuilt from the ground up. And they told us stories of how when the water levels were basically reaching the roofs of their houses, their family was at one point floating down their street on a mattress. Hands filled with as many valuables as they could carry watching as their houses in their neighbor in their neighbors houses filled with memories and comfort and comfort was being ruined and torn to shreds by water and this was only the beginning of their suffering there was another family that i got to meet in nebraska whose house was again ruined due to, due to flooding from the nearby river this couple had already been through an unbearable the unbearable pain of losing their daughter to cancer and this made rebuilding their house extremely difficult because it meant taking apart their daughter's room. This was all they had left in memory of her. However, they knew they would have to eventually make this excruciating decision to keep moving forward because they still had grandchildren they wanted to be able to come over and visit. This kind of loss and pain is unimaginable and something most of us wouldn't think about. It's easy to forget about what other people are going through when we are so preoccupied with our own lives. Much like Israel, these families had not just once, but again and again, been stuck in these, heart, in these heartbreaking situations. Still, they all had one thing in common, and this was hope. Hope for the
their future, hope for their homes, hope for their children and their children's children, hope for others. I didn't just get the chance to learn how to sand down mud and texture walls and pull out nails, but I learned that I learned a family is not defined by the roof by the roof over their heads, but by the love carried through their hearts. These families don't just keep fighting for their kids, but for their grandkids. I remember my work group was sitting in a circle talking to the family who suffered the hurricane in Baton Rouge. And while most of us were wondering where God was for these people, the mother of this family wasn't looking for our pity, and she countered us with the question, where is it, God? They were just happy that all, that all of them were alive and healthy. They were stronger and closer than they had ever been before, and that they were thank and for that they were thankful. Not only does this bring perspective, but also exemplifies how God is all around us and in the most unforeseen places. To reiterate, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, declare the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Showing that God's plan for us aren't simplified to our lives alone, but to those who come after and while not easily seen up close, it's a big picture that will bring us peace and give us hope. Speaking of which, I also know there's a lot of kids getting confirmed and getting ready for high school and hopefully youth group. I urge and hope all of you, cho all of you choose to be a part of Blaze and the mission trips because it's genuinely surprising and unexpected at how easily we all come together and how much fun we have. Youth group is unique in the way that everyone is so accepting and loving, no matter what, and sadly that isn't something you can find anywhere, especially at this age when we need it the most. And while I won't be here to watch as the youth group keeps growing, it's up to you guys to make sure that it does in fact keep growing. Thanks be to God. Green on the floor, you feed me. 
With how hectic, crazy, and moment to moment our lives are, we often forget to take a breath and feel at peace. During our or after our worship, we want you to take a moment and to find space for you to be still. For a couple minutes, I would like you to find a place in your house or outside that is peaceful for you. In this place, take a deep breath and as you exhale, repeat the words from Psalm 146, 10. Be still and know I am God. Do this three, four, or as many times as you would like. After this, take a picture of that peaceful place or yourself. We would love to have you share your peacefulness on social media with that picture so that you can invite others to take a moment to be still. Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Here are our announcements for today. Please submit names of loved ones who have passed so that they can be read at our All Saints Remembrance on November 1st. Names must be submitted to Karen no later than October 20th. You are invited to join us in celebrating Halloween CLC style. Come and open your trunk for Trunk or Treat on October 31st from 4 to 6 p.m. On October 25th, Reformation Sunday, 25 of our youth will affirm their baptism through confirmation. Please wear red that day to commemorate Reformation. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace and love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen.